You're welcome. Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu will celebrate his first independence anniversary as Nigeria's president with the country somewhat far from its best state. The least popular, popular elected president in history, going by the election results and numbers, Tinubu is expected to address Nigerians on key concerns, including the high cost of living and the struggling Nigerian economy. While he only recently marked his 100 days in office as president, expectations come with Nigeria's pol biggest political stool, especially in the back, on the back of a strong campaign. The state of the nation calls for an instant injection of people-driven policies, but with the president still dividing opinions around the country, Nigeria's 63rd anniversary offers another opportunity for the nation to look into its journey so far. We're asking Nigeria at 63, the nation or the state of the nation, how far so far? We have a crack panel of guests tonight. Adetunji Ogunyemi is a lawyer and associate professor of economic history at the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe. Should I say prestigious Obafemi Awolowo University? Joe Femi Dagunro is a founder, Lagos Forum, and a public policy analyst. And Gina Johnson is a director of special programs at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It is a pleasure to share the platform with the men of Timba and Caliber, Iganots and the Coconut. Right. Okay. Thank you for having me. The, the pleasure is all ours, really. Um, uh, thank you so much for your time. Let's start with you, um, Joe Femitakonro. Looking back at the past 63 years, what would you say are Nigeria's biggest achievements as an independent nation? Well, bas <clears throat> excuse me. basically, you we have to see that any man or woman that is 63, uh, most of us who have crossed that age will be uh, grandfathers or grandmothers. And you know the responsibilities of grandfathers and grandmothers. But today in Nigeria, we have a lot of responsibilities as an independent nation that we cannot meet or we cannot even carry out some of our responsibility. And that is due to our own carelessness or mismanagement of our resources. Nigeria is a blessed country with so many things that other nations or other countries will be happy to have, even a quarter of what we have. But it's unfortunate that everyone comes in and goes out with something and there's no repercussion, there's no uh, way to punish those who have uh, mismanaged our economy, mismanaged this country for this far. And that is the same thing. Recollect some few months ago, you have the central bank. That place is, is, is really stinking. You know, it's insanely, you know, uh, rotten, you know, uh, as, as what to say, because we plunge ourselves into this mess just because of few people who could not take decisive decision to, to lead us right. And there's nothing that has happened up to now. The country, the people of Nigeria, they began to understand what is macro and microeconomics. They began to understand what is monetary policy, what is fiscal policy. So it's good, but then in a bad way, because most people have not even uh, understood who was or who is the governor of Central Bank. But the last few months, uh, Emefile became one of the most popular names uh, in Nigeria due to some reasons that is very, very unpalatable. You see, people dying because of not being able to collect their money, not being able to spend their money. I mean, that is that is contrary to what we bargained for. And now we have had so many uh, informations coming out. We have read so many informations out there. Nigeria is now waiting. What will happen after all this information, haven't seen all these rots in the system. Now, what we happen? Now, we have a president that is going around the world trying to make us understand or make the people understand Nigeria is a good place. Fantastic. We saw Obasanjo did the same thing when he came in with a, I mean, a brilliant team. And they went around, we got, you know, uh, debt forgiven and a lot of things came right. But towards the end, we find ourselves in a mess. Electricity is not, today we are debating electricity. We are debating a lot of things that we're supposed to have put behind us. And this country, they should be enjoying. You see what is going on. People live in this country in droves. Her medical doctors are, are killing, are dying just because of stress. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things that shouldn't be happening at the age of 63. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be relaxing. We should have, you know, Nigeria should be at the stage of a retirement. And then when you know you are going for retirement, you know you are planning so many things good for, for yourself. 
yourself. So, but who are those people that have planned retirement for the people of this country? Most Nigerians are not retiring so well. They are in pain all over. All right. But the few people... And it's unfortunate. You keep okay. telling us, we keep hearing. Only few people are enjoying these things. Only few people. Who are these few people? Take, for instance, the Minister of Interior Affairs came out some few days. Immediately he got there. He said, you should have your passport within 14 days. Fantastic idea. And look at what happened. Within four days right. thereafter. Uh, Mr. Joe Femi you you, 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 you you painted a, a very uh, you know, grim picture um, of the reality in Nigeria faces today. Uh, we'll come back to some more of that because we have uh, a lot to talk about today. But um, uh, Ade Tunji Ogunyemi, your, your thoughts on um, Nigeria's uh, biggest accomplishment or biggest uh, uh, achievement as an independent nation? Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Nigeria is a country of multiple nationalities. Multiple nationalities far in excess of 300. The fact that we have been able to keep ourselves together as one single country, after having fought a war that lasted 30 months, and emerged from that war a united country, that is an achievement. That's a great achievement. Not many countries have succeeded in achieving that kind of unity. Things may not be perfect in the fatherland, but I tell you, there's nowhere in the world that their political system is perfect. What you have is the management of such nations in such a way that the multiple competing forces within its territory do not do things that will make the country to act of our In respect of keeping Nigeria together as one, we have, we have succeeded. Mm. Secondly, the sovereignty of Nigeria is beyond discussion. We have been able to maintain our sovereignty such that we are not directly under the control of any other country in the world. Absolutely not. We have succeeded in that. And then the third is, have we, have we achieved economic growth and economic development? Economic growth, yes. We have grown significantly from an economy of less than $50 billion at independence to an economy in excess of $535 billion in terms of our GDP. But have we achieved development? And the answer is no. And the reasons are many. But for the sake of uh, being brief, I would say it is the failure to set the foundation for the infrastructural development of this country. Roads, piped water, electricity, industrial foundations for the takeoff of the economy of this country. All right. That is where Nigerians seem to be very angry with their government. Okay, we'll, 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 come, to, we'll come to more of the grievances very shortly. Uh, but let's go over to Gide Johnson. Um, to you, your take on Nigeria's greatest achievement uh, as an independent nation. Well, what we have succeeded to do is the, the sustenance of democratic governance, which, in my mind, still a long shot for us having a truly democratic society, but what we still have is the trappings of democracy, which I call a form of civilian government. To a large extent, for almost a quarter of a century, we have had uninterrupted democratic governance uh, compared to what we used to have in the past with series of military inter interregnum and intervention in our polity. That I would say, despite the challenges that we have, at least since 1999 to date, we have had a series of elections that have brought gov governors at various levels, the state level, um, the federal level, and the national assembly level. That I will ascribe to be um, one of the major landmark achievements we have ever achieved. Because if anyone has said, say 20, 25 years ago, say 30 years ago, say 40 years ago, that Nigeria will have an uninterrupted democratic governance at all levels for a period of a quarter of a century, someone would say it's absolutely impossible. And if you consider the recent um, uh, the recent political development in neighboring countries, when you consider what happened in Burkina Faso, what happened in Mali, in Niger, in, in Guinea, and um, you begin to see 
the, 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 the good side of us having a democratic governance and not having military intervention. So for me, it's a major, it's a major, it's a major achievement which we have since 1993. Every other, every other thing is like we're in a vicious cycle. We keep taking test step forward and test step backward. In any case, we hope for the best. Interesting, interesting. Ten step forwards and ten step backwards. Well, uh, uh, Joe Medagunro, let's move on to the challenges. What are some of the biggest challenges that Nigeria has faced as an independent nation, in your opinion? You see, <clears throat> excuse me, when we look at the idea of being together and our democratically elected uh, presidents and uh, uh, having been able to maintain uh, unity among ourselves, these are fantastic achievements, yes. But this achievement has its pain. I'm, 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 aware, I'm, I'm of the opinion that uh, if we are making developments or if we are saying we have made achievements in those areas, or maybe political areas, we should be able to have the economic growth to sustain it as well. You know, we should have more in the area of education. Look at our educational system. It seems as if, you know, it's not just about complaining about all these things. The pain is our leaders, they, they're quite, they're, they are aware of all this problem. And what I'm saying is, it is the people, when we continue to say the civil servant, uh, the the uh, ghost workers, and so many other things, we blame it on one area or the other. Can't we just, for once, begin to find the right way to eliminate some of these bottlenecks in our system? I know it is not something we can achieve in a day, just like what Gide said. If we're making 10 steps, let's continue to make maybe five steps rather than taking 10 steps and coming back 20 steps backward. So these are the things that I feel we should. If we want to take, I mean, tackle the issue of electricity, let us tackle it once and for all and begin to sustain that. Let us have a sustainable development. We cannot just continue like this and say, listen, because we are together, we are together in pain, we are together suffering, but this must stop or gradually we must move ahead. We cannot continue. That is the issue. We know the system. We know the theory. But sometimes all these theories, they failed us. Let us look at the pragmatism, the pragmatic effect of some of these things, how to achieve it. I know one thing that President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu is such a, a gentleman that he is looking for a way to make this happen. And that is why I'm saying 100 days is not enough to judge him. Even one year is not enough. One year, two years, three years is not enough. The mess on our, on, on our hands now is more than the mess of eight years or 20 years. We have been having this mess, but we must put a stop to it. This is the issue. We okay. cannot continue to have excuses. Let All us right. find a way to put a stop to it. And gradually look at, if we say we need trillions to start infrastructure, what has happened to all those infrastructure that we are not managing well? Why are we just like this, that we cannot manage what we have? Well, why? And these are the problems we have to begin to tackle. If we have to begin to review the ministers. So, so George Premier Guru, you're saying that, that uh, management of resources is, is, is a very serious issue in the country. It reminds me of... Um, uh, a, a former leader who said the problem is not uh, the money, but how to spend it. Do I feel people misunderstand him when they, they refer to that? But that's another issue for another day. Uh, uh, thank you, Jofemi Dagro. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ogunyemi, uh, I would like to take your take on, on the challenges the nation has faced to you. Which of them stands out or stand out? The greatest challenge that Nigeria has faced since 1960, and I dare say since 1914, has been the challenge in the area of economic growth and economic development. Uh, this country, we do not have sufficient infrastructure upon which we can found industrial takeoff. And believe you me, without industrial production in this country, we will never, never, never move out of poverty. We will be poor because industrial takeoff, industrial development instigates one, maximum employment to the idea of mass production for the purposes of earning hard-earned foreign exchange and three it achieves what is called optimum employment 
So we have not been able to lay the foundation. Take, for instance, the Ajakuta steel is still trying to get its feet. Oh. The Oshogo machine tools is moribund. The uh, Nigerian newsprint and newspaper company uh, in Okuiboku is dead. The Nigerian aluminum smelter company in the Korakwene is dead. These were the centers and foundations of, of Nigeria's industrial takeoff. And they are dead. Look at Apex Mills, Iwokwin Paper Mills, Basita. Basita is in Kwara State. Basita Sugar Industry. The Pujo Automobile Assembly Plant. All these are comatose. In fact, the Volkswagen Automobile Assembly, um, Volkswagen cars, beauties, pass out in Nigeria. It, it, that company has collapsed. So we have a fundamental problem in the area of setting the foundations for economic takeoff. Take -off. Going by the theory of a WW Rust in the stages of economic development. So it's like we are still in a subsistence economy, and that subsistence cannot guarantee us optimum employment. So today we are bedeviled by the problems of one, rising prices, inflation, the issue of um, exchange rates, and issues that have to do with lack of or too little production, which has made us not to be able to earn enough from our foreign exchange to be able to stabilize the currency called the Naira. These are the major issues All right. that have right. been uh, Dr. Guyam, you've taken us down memory lane. I mean, as a, a nursery school, primary school student, we wrote on Okui, Okuiboku paper, <laughs> though we didn't like it too much because it was brown, <laughs> and we felt uh, for some reason it wasn't good for our parents. But I mean, we had that Okuiboku uh, apex mills and even uh, the, uh, the aluminum plant in um, uh, in Akwaibom State, uh, Ikodabasi, one of those places, and all those things uh, we can talk about. Uh, Jilly Johnson, before we, we move on, uh, your take on, I think I saw you nodding, um, Nigeria's biggest challenge. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that countries face uh, since independence? What we need to do with industrial revolution to revive our dead in industry. Um, I used to tell people I grew up around the Keja area of Lagos, and then you have the Keja industrial estate. And then all you need to do is just to take a trip around that industrial estate and see what has happened to that Keja industrial industrial estate. And if 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 you if you are familiar with that environment, when the industries were the backbone, you talk about. I don't want to make mention of those companies because they didn't pay for advertising. We'll be doing free publicity for them, but. Anyone that is familiar understood these companies were the backbone of providing employment for a lot of Nigerians as well as contributing to our gross domestic product, which invariably strengthened the Naira, contribute to our foreign exchange and into export. What our major problem has been lack of visionary leaders. That's just the truth. We have not, we have been unfortunate with leadership uh, because. Um, what majority of those that have succeeded in ruling this country, particularly under democratic dispensation, is to talk about ABC of governance. When they talk about their achievement, they talk about building infrastructure. We have, we have, we have reduced governance to construction of roads, building of hospitals, and building of buildings, which if you give that job to any, anybody to do, with the resources they get from the federal allocation, they will get that done. However, in building the industrial base, in diversifying the economy and exploiting the comparative advantage which each of the states has in building their local economy, most of the states have left that particular area unattended to. And Nigeria cannot be industrialized until we solve the problem of power. We must resolve the problem of power. Someone said, the first thing God created according to the Jewish account of creation is light. Let there be light. Now, there can't be meaningful development if there are no lights. It is like you used to sustain the big industrial company. It is like you used to sustain the small, medium scale enterprises. If you look at the overhead cost of people running their businesses, what they spend in overhead costs in terms of getting energy, you'll be shocked at what goes on. If we can solve that particular problem, and it does not require rocket science. Government come, government goes, the same problem still remain the same. If we solve the problem of power, if you have a good visionary leader, it will take one, two, three issues. We will not solve all the problems. Just one, two, three issues. What are the critical areas that I need to? If I solve the problem of power, I've already solved the problem of industries because industries will have access to power. That itself will create employment opportunities. That employment opportunity will boost the economy. 
boosting the economy will increase the value of Naira. It will reduce the inflation. It will reduce our dependence on, 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 on foreign export, on, on foreign imports. Invariably, you go to the economy. You balance between growth and development, which Prof was talking about. We have economic growth, but we don't have economic development. Because people, you cannot see it in the life of an average and of an average Nigeria, except in the political class. That's where you see it. In Nigeria, it is only in Nigeria that people become rich by having access to political offices. I was discussing with some of my friends. I said the rich people in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 70s, they were not politicians, they were farmers. They were commodity traders. What changed between the 80s and 2000 that the rich people in Nigeria are not commodity traders, are no longer farmers, and not industrialist or political class. That tells you the whole, that tells you the whole story. It gives you the clearest picture of the situation of the problem we have found ourselves. The major challenge that we have. If I ask you, all of the gladiators in the political landscape today, what was their award in 1999 in terms of the asset? In 1999, all of them, from the president to the right. councillor, what was the asset in 1999 compared the asset to what it is in 2023? One of the presidential candidates call it um, wealth without enterprise. And, and that's the reality. We need missionary oh. leaders. Missionary oh. leaders that invest in this, in this country. Wow. That believe very, in this very country interesting. That uh, tackles issues. Yes, Julia Johnson, quite interesting. Uh, you've all given us you know, a very, very, very interesting assessment of the achievements and the challenges. But um, we've been hearing people talk about. I mean, from how many times I can remember, you know, fulfilling the potential of Nigeria. I remember in the 80s, we used to sing some songs about, you know, um, fulfilling Nigeria's potential. All those national songs, you know, we were singing all that. But the question is, does Nigeria still have the ability uh, to realize its potential at this point? Looking at, at all that's happened and all the hopes, I remember Mission 2020, not the one of Yaradua, the one before Yaradua, you know, um, and apart from the asking if Nigeria has, still has the ability to realize its potential, does Nigeria also still have the opportunity to fulfill its potential, even if it has the ability? Because it's a time and tide waste for no man. I don't know if the resources we have uh, are still the same way it was 20 years ago. So I go to you, uh, uh, Joe Femi Dagoro. Does Nigeria have the ability and does it still have the opportunity to you know, fulfill its potential? We have the potentials, we have the ability, and we have the capability as well. There's nothing wrong with the people of this country uh, that we not make them to achieve what they want to achieve if the leadership provides the, the requisite uh, uh, infrastructure. They, like most of my colleagues, they said, provide power supply. I mean, we have the opportunity to have uh, the wind energy, the solar energy. We are not tapping into all this as we should. And these are great opportunities for us to tap into. We have brilliant men and women that are ready. That is why this slogan of renewed hope is quite, you know, apt, it's quite real. We can renew our hope. Nigerians' hope has been renewed so many times. And, uh, you know, they see that, oh, why again? And this is what I'm saying. We know all this industry that have collapsed. We have the industrial areas. Nigeria was trying to say, and Prof was trying to mention all these beautiful things Things that we're proud of but today we are not proud of that but we have new ones coming and the old ones are dying uh, you see but the issue I've always said is why can't we just do something new can't we just do something good not just new we can revive some of these uh, industries we can make them work again but it is just like it seems it's an avenue to make money to steal money not just to make money you can make money if you are making profit to steal money and there is no consequence that is the thing that is paining most Nigerians no consequences at all steal the money go away and you come back and sometimes make a plea bargain and you go with the money 
You know, someone will steal a chicken, he goes to six months, and you see somebody who is stealing billion, he, he has a plea bargain and he walks away and leaves the country. It is painful. There must be, you know, issues that we have to tackle. We all know the problems of Nigeria. And Nigerians are ready to stay at home, to walk, I mean, to stay in their country and develop it. Yes, renewed hope. But then, for how long? For how long? And that is the most painful thing. It is not a theory. We have the economic theory. We have the potentials. Let us find a better way to continue to do this. We look at our marine. People are coming to our sea, and the fish, they take our fishes away and bring it back to us. Look at what is happening in a place like Mauritius. Look at how they're developing their economy. Look at African countries. Don't even go to Europe or America. Look at a couple of African countries. The way they are developing their economy, they have their problems as well. It's not as if we can be perfect. No country is perfect. Yes, but they are making, you know, opportunity. They are giving opportunity. We don't have a welfare scheme. For all the 63 years, no welfare scheme, even when some, some states, they, they can't pay their pensioners. They can't pay their workers. Imagine workers not being paid for 13 months in some states, and the governor will be comfortable to buy bulletproofs and do all those things and say, well, for, for, the, for what is entitled to me. I mean, this is not fair. And we have to begin to see that it's not fair. And this is why I'm saying we still have a renewed hope in this country. We will still give the president, we are giving him enough room because we know this is, is not this is not just a four-year issue or eight years issue. We know the mess that was made. We know the mess that the, the, the mess that was committed. But then let us begin to see how it goes. I repeat, if that gentleman comes up with that passport issue and say within 14 days we can get our passport in Nigeria. I would say that's making achievement. That's a good growth. You know, we want to see it beginning to happen. Okay. If you can fly, take off from Lagos to Abuja without having a delay for three hours, and nobody is telling you why the delay occurs. These are the things we want to measure. They are there to measure. People can measure it and say, hooray, this is what is happening. In my so you're, you're, you're saying but that we, we still have Nigeria still has ability to achieve its potential and still has the opportunity to do that. Um, and we're seeing some sparks and some signs if things uh, are done right. But I want to go to, um, uh, thank you, Jofemi Dagun. I want to go to uh, Dr. Jetunji Oguyemi. Um, it could be argued, I mean, having listened to, you know, the picture that uh, Jofemi Dagun has eloquently painted, it could be argued that um, uh, maybe, you know, in 1999, Nigeria had an opportunity because the nation came and had some hope and, you know, the nation was not as divided as it is today. Um, everyone was ready uh, for democracy that was fought for through the 90s. It could even be argued that, you know, when Jonathan came, Nigerians were ready. It could even be argued that there was an opportunity when Buhari came because there was some hope out there after Jonathan's uh, breath air promise, you know, that uh, Buhari promised change. And now we have renewed hope. Uh, I, I don't think you all, you will disagree with me if, if I tell Nigerians are tired of all these promises and they don't see beyond the words anymore. Um, we had a Jonathan story of I had no shoes and fresh air and everything. So it could be argued that the issues Nigeria has today are so much that you can't even begin to think of how the country can surmount the challenges. Are we talking about insecurity? Are we talking about banditry and all that? Are we talking about the fact that the nation's biggest resource in terms of natural resources, uh, which is oil, is amounting to nothing today, nothing, nothing. So, does Niger, is, can Nigeria really, really achieve anything now, moving forward? Doctor. <laughs> when I hear this kind of narrative about Nigeria, I immediately uh, remember what uh, they say, now late, um, Ty Solarin said, about Nigerians constantly being in a haste. Um, if government makes some promises, and that government, including those governments that have come before them, I mean, the last 24 years, what is that in the history of a country? Absolutely nothing. Egypt had been in existence for 2,300 years. Egypt, Egypt of Al-Sisi, was in existence 2,300 years before Christ. Ethiopia, previously called Abyssinia, was in existence 1,890 years, and it is still here. So I, I think we, we, we need to, you know, exercise some patience when you talk of nations growing and developing. It takes time. 
and it is always incremental. Absolutely. You cannot achieve development in a day, except if you want to uh, do some you know, fake development, which, is, which borders on maybe you have some dictatorial powers to make things wrong outside of the democratic system. But if we have good leadership, as my colleagues have suggested, only four things we make in Nigeria and its all to be resuscitated. Just four things. One, to secure Nigeria. Two, to provide the infrastructure of electricity. Three, to ensure that our railway work. And four, to concentrate on agriculture so that the six zones of the country can go into their areas of comparative advantage with respect to production of certain specialized crops. For example, oil palm grows best in the South-South. Oil palm grows best in the South-South. Cocoa and coffee grows best in the Southwest. Cassava, too, in the Southwest. In the North, cereals, granules, cereals. You have pigeon pea, cow pea, sorghum grow best in the North, particularly in the Sahelian region. And of course, cassava and others grow everywhere in Nigeria. See, if we concentrate in just these four areas, I call them the four square of Nigeria's development. It is more than enough to grow, to jumpstart the economy from the doldrums that it has now into development. And good leadership, only good leadership will be able to anchor that. And how do you get good leadership? I tell you, it does not come easy. It takes incremental training from primary, secondary, possibly university and colleges, to be able to get good leaders, those who govern in such a way that their people is their priority and not their pockets. Today, political offices have become over-incentivized. I mean, one of our colleagues here said that, I mean, what was the worth of some people in 1999? And what's their worth now? It has become too easy to get rich quick going into government. So we need to do something about de-incentivizing political offices. And at that way, that's the only way you can attract quality human beings, not rent seekers, not rent seekers. Okay, very interesting. Uh, Julia Johnson, um, is it a case of missed opportunities uh, or a case of we can still do it, we can still achieve it? Well, um, Abraham caught the vision at more than 75 years, and then his, his division was still fulfilling his lifetime. As far as I'm concerned, it's not too late for Nigeria. Nigeria is a blessed country with natural resources, even with human resources. What we have lacked is the, is the vision, and that vision comes from leadership with respect to, and I love what Prof highlighted in terms of four cardinal things that we need to do. All we need to do is just to focus on key critical areas that will bring about development. What grew the, what grew the economy of Nigeria post-independence, it was agriculture. A nation that cannot feed itself cannot develop. What grew the economy of Nigeria? We have the infrastructural backbone. The roads were good. The railway system was functional. The railway system was functional. Our health sector were functional. Everything, everything we want to talk about, functional. We, are, we will have storage systems, storage, storage facilities for those that are engaging in commodity trading. All we need to do is to go back to the basics. What did we do in the 60s, in the 70s, before we discovered oil? But, but, but Julia Johnson, the, the, world, the world has moved on, and Nigeria is not the same country it was in the 60s and 70s. It's a more complex, multi-complex, multifaceted country with a lot look, of challenges, look, a burgeoning I, I population you, that will soon overtake the United States of America. No, no, the, 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 it's very simple. How much of our income do we spend on sustenance? How much? How much do we spend on food? Now, any nation that does not have a saving culture cannot develop because people can't have access to credit. We spend close to about 80 to 85% of our income on subsistence, on survival. Now, can, can you, what, how much grocery are you going to spend a thousand units of American dollar to buy? How much groceries are you going to use a thousand unit of Nigerian Naira to buy? It's very clear, it's very simple. The first thing every nation that developed, the first problem they solve is the problem of hunger. And there's hunger in the land. 
And it's because we have not paid attention to agriculture. We are only paying lip service to agriculture. Every state does not think outside of the box. Okay. You know what every state does? Every local government does? They wait for the end of the month for the fact meeting. They go for the fact meeting where they fact everything. And they don't think about other 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 ways of generating internally generated revenue. All right. And those that are generating revenue, you know what how they generate their revenue? By imposing every tax burden, every tax burden on the citizenry that are stretched. Not looking at other ways in creating employment opportunities, but rather coming up with regulations that stifle private business ownership, that stifle small and medium scale enterprise. It's very, very clear. Well, 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 well Gine, 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 uh, thank you so much, Jenny Johnson. We, 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 I, I would bring in another question before we go on a break. Um, it, it could be a good that um, this will continue because the people do not probably uh, say anything to some of these. Uh, I mean, we can look at what's been happening after COVID and the whole global economic meltdown. We still had government increasing taxes, electricity, fuel, uh, uh, universities, uh, education, and all that. But let's leave that for another day. This is a very difficult question. It's a question we don't usually ask um, yeah, as far as the media is concerned. But it's a question that Nigerians have asked themselves and discussing. And I'd like to pose it to you, gentlemen. Very briefly, your responses before we go on a break. Let's start with you, uh, uh, Jeffrey Dagoro. It's a unity question, and Dr. Oguyemi, um, uh, you know, talked about that or touched on that a bit when he talked about Nigeria's biggest success. Um, the argument and the debate about Nigeria's unity needing to be renegotiated is still there. It's the elephant in the room. Um, does a country need to have, urgently need to have that conversation? amongst its different parts, so, you know, call it regions or geopolitical zones. Is Nigeria, um, is that a, an issue that needs to be surmounted? Stay together or look for an amicable way to, to break up? I'll start with you, Joe Femi Dagoro. I tell you, there's no other way. We, we just have to be together. We're enjoying what we're enjoying today as uh, a country just because we're together. You know, that, there's no doubt about that. We are enjoying every privilege that we can have and claiming to be Nigerian today is because of this unity that we have. We have, I mean, this, that, there is, there is no doubt about that. Then uh, I just want to quickly ship in something. You see, when you see the, the issue of agriculture that is being mentioned, we have a lot of issues right now that we're not probably prevailing then. I mean, you are talking about land use charges this time around. You are talking about, you know, the people not having been able to go to their farms. And that is is another area of security you have to look into. We have to be very sincere with ourselves. And the only thing is this, let's face the reality. If anybody steals government money, if you steal the people's money, you face the music. Whether we disincentivize it or not, somebody takes government money or whoever's money, who, I mean, how do you get 100 million to take a form? And then if you have to take 100 million and you are still working in the service of the government, there must be a penalty for such things. People must declare their assets. People must be able to claim and make us understand that this we have to start from somewhere. We cannot just continue like this. Even if we have all these brilliant ideas, we have leadership issue. We have to start from somewhere. The students are resuming. Look at what has happened. They sat with them and they negotiated their way out because the government has failed them somehow. So these students, they came up, they met with the VCs, and the VCs said, okay, we are not going to increase. We are... So at times, the people have to negotiate among themselves to get the best for themselves. We cannot continue to work for the government. And that is why I'm saying we should give this government, you know, a kind of breathing space as well to be able to see what they can come up with because it is really, really tight for them. And then when you look at this unity thing, unless we come together, we can negotiate a couple of things, but we can't negotiate our unity. And that's what is keeping us All together. Right. No right. country will be ready to do that. And we shouldn't think of that. All right. Yeah, well, you said we should give the government breathing space, but the people may argue that they're the ones who are choked us at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Oguyemi, your thoughts? Um, love Nigerians don't buy into the country. They don't want to hear about Nigeria. They don't well, love the um, country. I've had several discussions. Best. All right. So over to you. Do you need to question? What has always worked best for Nigeria? And what did work best for Nigeria between 1954 and 1966 
1966 being the year that the military introduced their unitarism and what has actually made Nigerians to hate themselves the more. No thanks to them at all. I mean, there's no part in the Nigerian history that gives any credit to the military uh, for the level of destruction they have done to national solidarity and coverage. But leaving that, what has worked best for Nigeria is competitive federalism. Competitive federalism. That is a federal system in which the federal government is not doing everything. In other words, the need to tinker with the exclusive legislative list contained in the second schedule, part one of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, to deconcentrate power from the federal demor and vest these in the, in the regions, if you like, or zones. In fact, I would like a situation in which there is a constitutional element to recognize the zones as centers of governance so that we don't have more than six zones. At present, with 36 state governments in Nigeria, 768 local governments, six area councils in Abuja, making 774 sub sub nationalism, uh, sub national uh, levels of government in Nigeria, we are clearly over governed. That is why seven, between 75 and 80% of Nigeria's total income goes into paying salaries, wages, and overhead. That's the current expenditure. What is left for development? Absolutely nothing. So the structure of Nigeria is unwieldy with respect to a federal system. Actually, we should not have more than seven states or seven zones. And these seven zones should be at par. They should have equal power and then have the capacity to be able to self-develop on their own without having to go copy hand to the center. And that will mean adjusting the Land Use Act such that the authority to dispense with land and the minerals, the minerals they are contained best in the zones or the states, as the case may be, and not in the center. Hmm. Interesting. So we have uh, different republics, just like you have in some countries. Amazing. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'd like to go to Jiri Johnson next. Um, Jiri, uh, uh, your journalism, uh, um, you know, instructor and lec instructor and lecturer. Um, I'm sure you've listened to um, part of conversations when Nigerians are asked, "Do you believe in your country?" You know, we do that every year. You know, first October. And 99% rough estimate of those who will always contribute to such conversations on radio and television, I will say they don't believe in the country. I haven't seen a, 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 a country around the world in my, my short time on earth here uh, with citizens who do not believe in their country as much as we see in Nigeria. People do not believe in the country. Um, is, are we better off going separate ways? We have a pseudo unity, a pseudo unity in the sense that um, on on paper we claim to be united, but in reality, even if you look at the fallout of 2023 election, you cannot imagine some of the things that happened in Lagos State, for example, as cosmopolitan, as exposed to uh, to, to global trends, and um, as being the former capital of Nigeria. What happened? How Lagos politics was indigenized. By, by people just for their selfish, selfish reasons. I think the solution to us having that unity has been proposed by Prof, saying that we need to go back to true federalism. We need to go back to, to probably if we could make use of, you can't go back to the three regions we have in the past. We could make use of the six geopolitical, ge geopolitical zone. You see, he, there, there's a confusion with respect to who is a Nigerian. One, every Nigerian has three identity. One is your, you are an indigenous of a local government, you are an origin of a state, and then before you become the citizen of Nigeria. So every Nigerian, if he's competing with another Nigerian, whether within his state of origin, within the state of origin or local government of origin, he will talk about his clan. He will look for the most suitable, he will look for the most suitable identity that he can use to, to, to outsmart or at which whoever is competing with. But first and foremost, an American sees himself as an American citizen. He does not see himself as a New Yorker. So these are the issues we need to, to resolve. Who is a Nigerian? And some have advocated that we need to take the issue of state of origin out of what we used to identify ourselves. We need to take the issue of local government or local government or your local lo indigenous of which local government you are. You recall how Rwanda was able to deal with that issue, that issue of ethnic rivalry 
which led to ethnic cleansing between the Tutsi and the Hutus, and were able to create a new national identity. So we need a new national identity. And if we don't create that new national identity, the unity we talk about, we just be talking about the unity on paper. But in reality, in reality is that unity does not exist. All you need to do is to go to the marketplace. All you need to do is to talk to aggregates of Nigerians and aggregate their opinion. And you see that they don't believe. It's just the political class. After they've caused the division through their political rhetoric, they will come during governance and say, we are united, Nigeria is one. Nigeria is this, like, we are asked, they are the ones that are fanning the embers of division. They are the ones that are fanning the embers of discord among Nigerians get along. All you need to do, just go to the marketplace. Go to any market, anywhere. I've been to market in the north. I've been to market in the east. I've been to market in the south. I've been to market in the, in the south south. I've been to market in the middle. I've been to market in Lagos. All you need to do is just go to the market and see how Nigerians regardless of their race, regardless of their tribe, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their local, how they relate better with one another. But for political expediencies, the political class make use of state of origin, local government, and they brought religion as a factor into it, which, which never mattered in the past and has become a major cause of division in the country. So if we really want to move forward, we must deal with the issue of state of origin. We must deal with the issue but, but, but of Jimmy Johnson, th this if market, you... this market, you know, scenario painted is quite enticing. But the the fact is that we have a huge mistrust between the tribes in this country. Should we talk about the farmer head clashes? Um, should we talk about the um, the statement by some traditional rulers in some parts of the country during election? Should we talk about attacks on certain uh, people from certain parts of the country in the same markets? Yeah. I've seen people stabbed by their brothers from one part of the country, and then their yams and their livestock burned by their brothers from another part of the country. Um, even in some states like Kaduna State, it is a Do we have war between clashes? Christians Do we have and Muslims. With people speaking the same language in, across the state in Nigeria, coffee was declared in Oshun State recently. Um, the Umuleri Aguleri crisis, or the Ofa Ijad, the Ofa Enrile crisis, you, you see, when people, it is human nature to have one form of communal issues. But who are those funny the embers? If you go to it, you will see that it is leadership. If it is not the king, it will be some. If it is not the king, it could be the traditional rulers. Or it could be some highly powerful people in that in in communities clashing with one another that are finding the embers. It's okay. clear. It's very, very clear. All right. We, we have to go, gentlemen. We have to go. We're out of time. I would just quickly want to ask you, um, uh, 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 Jeff M. Darugo, in a sentence or two, what is your vision of Nigeria in the next 63 years? On the next couple of decades, what Nigeria do you see? Two sentences, please, at most. Well, I see a, a, a brief country because uh, I already see my grandchildren doing something different. And uh, I believe if we continue to teach them this aspect of unity, uh, to be lawful and to avoid this lawlessness, they go to school whereby they mix with uh, oh. whether Igbo, Hausa, and they learn the languages as well, not just French and German. They learn Hausa, they learn Igbo language. I think that is the only thing. Once we come together that way, I see a beautiful country, even if most of us might not be here because, I mean, we can't be, uh, some of us might be here, some of us might not be here, but I see a beautiful country and I see a good leadership rising. All right. All right. Good leadership. Uh, Jofem Dagoro, thank you. Uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Dechindu, uh, Dechindu, very quickly, please, a sentence or two. What's your vision of thank Nigeria you. in you. the next few decades? I see a Nigeria that <clears throat> we remain together at least in the next half a century and uh, remain together under a truly federal system in which there will be competition among the regions for the ultimate development of their people. All right. All right. Thank you very much. And Gina Johnson, your, your vision for Nigeria in the next 63 years? National anthem, a national value system, to God of creation, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and live in just and truth. Great love to I attain to build a nation where peace and justice reign. If we make that a national core value, I can assure you this country will be great. Well, uh, uh, gentlemen, I think we can all agree that Jimmy Johnson has given us a closing prayer. 
uh, you know, because as a national prayer that we recite our government functions. Thank you so much for your time, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Dr. Dick Twinje Guyemi, lawyer and associate professor of economic history of Bafemi Awolo University in Lefe. Uh, Joe Femi Daguru, founder of Lagos Forum and public policy analyst right here in Lagos State, Nigeria. And Julia Johnson, director of special programs, Nigeria Institute of Journalism, Lagos. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. All right, and that's the size of our package on Politics HQ for this week. Nigeria, happy birthday.